process of the Zeppelin's torso for funsies a little bit. Um, some people were curious on my painting process, and it's kind of a precursor to the app tutorial I'm going to do, hopefully this week if everything goes well. So I hope this is interesting or has anything that people can enjoy or learn from. Um, if I get it to work, there we go. So he's mostly painted except for his skin. Um, I got his palette over here, over here. I picked four colors, this and this for the original colors I borrowed from Zeppelin's Drill Skin Tone, but I paint with four colors um, for my technique to make it as in the painterly style. I use this brush here, Smooth Paintbrush, it's in CSP. Um, it's got a painterly look and I don't often blend or, or smudge. I like the painterly look. Sometimes I will use the airbrush to smooth it out instead because when you use the blend you get a really really awful chunky smudge that just makes it look kind of messy, muddy a little bit. But anyway, so to do the shadows we got the base color and for the shadow I use again the smooth brush but I use a big brush to kind of lay down the color and in some places almost kind of like a gradient. So it just adds a little bit more depth to the painting process. It's not the darkest it's going to be, it's just laying down a little bit of tone to it so that way it looks more three-dimensional as we go. In each stage I'll explain why I'm doing what I'm doing and hopefully it'll make sense. I'm not really used to recording myself so please bear with me and I hope I can get it down by the time I do the app tutorial. As you can see I'm just doing a very broad just general shaping, kind of outlining the muscles a little bit, not super in-depth, but just enough to do an overall outline to give it shape. And again, I'm not going the darkest there is. When everything is generally outlined, um, even the face a little bit, just to add the gradiency a little bit, I will go in with the same shadow, but a smaller brush, much smaller. Well, not terribly smaller. And as you can see, it's darker. His pecs are raised in this picture, so the shape is very different than they usually are in. The shadow is kind of almost like a... almost like a diamond. Because when they're raised, they move up. Otherwise, it looks very strange if you try and do regular size squarish pecs with the arms raised. It doesn't, it doesn't happen that way. So I'm kind of outlining um, torso even more so, but smaller. By having the different color, it really helps add the depth already, and I've only used the same color, just with a different opacity. Nerpers! <laughs> no <laughs> nerpers! No, that's that's considered lewd to have nerpers. Nerp different nerpers! Okay, just for you. Just for you. I can find them. Nerpers. Oh, hold on, my phone's ringing. Please answer that. Thank you very much. Okay. Yes. Put nipples on that sexy man. That There's nippers right there. Nippers. Now he's obscene. Oh, Let's get rid of them. Okay, there. He's, he's better. He's better. So anyway, adding the deepest shadow. He doesn't actually have that dark of a shadow because he's got very fair skin. You don't want to have extreme colors for a skin tone unless... Well, you really don't. You want to stay within the color scheme of their tone. If it's too dark, it looks really off. Oh, hold on. Okay, so we're doing more of an outline. I had to pause the recording, so I'm sorry if I left off somewhere and lost track of myself. I had a phone call. Looks like I've got an unpainted graphic there. I had to recently change the shape of some of the outlines just to fix it. So I gotta unlock the transparency and fix that. There we go. Lock it again. It just makes it simpler that way. So we're adding the same shadow to the shapes of the muscles and everything. At first I outlined the muscle, the abs, even though honestly it's 
it really flattens it out if you just outline them. It doesn't really add a dimension, but as I'm painting the different colors, it'll show what really I'm doing because I'm going to add reflective shadows and highlights. You'll notice in my artwork, over the course of time, the old technique I used to use with the hard lines, that the shadow got dark then light again. That actually was not just a shadow, that was reflective lighting. It, it's a trick I learned years ago that really adds depth and makes it pop out more than just shadow to shadow. It is reflecting the light of something nearby, or especially skin because it's highly reflective, it's not just flat. But in the painter style, it's it actually showcases a lot more, it's, it adds a lot more detail, or a lot more depth to it than the flat style, for obviously reasons it's not flat. Um, so I'm outlining a little bit with a, with a shadow for now. It's already popping a lot more than it was before. Almost done here. The shadows are very basic because the lighting, well, it's not dynamic or anything, it's just straight on. If it was more of a hard light or a dramatic lighting, it would be a lot different. And I'm going to go over with the base skin tone in the end to kind of clean up the shadows and make them stand out a little better. So that's one of the last stages before the kind of highlights. And again, he's very fair skin, so the shadows, you don't want it to be that dark. Otherwise, it'll look very striking. Oh, more unpainted pixels. I lost myself, what can I say? Yeah, so again, not dramatic lighting, just enough to give him form. Oh, I think I painted out of the line there. Yep. And we're almost done with the, ba the dark shadow. Oh, that's on the brush, that is. Yeah. And like I said, we're going to go with the base color to clean these shadows up so they're not so chunky in certain areas. And there's more depth than others. Okay, so the reflective lighting is, let's see, drop it, that guy there. So let's do the face first, and I always use a smaller brush whenever I do the reflective shadow. You don't want to cover, oh, I missed a step, I missed his upper lip, I like to shadow that, or shade that too. That way it looks a little, you know, attractive. Make his lips kissable. <laughs> And again, a smaller brush, otherwise it hogs the whole shadow and takes away the reflective nature. See how much different it looks already. The reflective shadow is not much, it's, it's actually darker than the base color, that's the trick. And it's a duller color. The shadow is more saturated, it's a richer color, while the reflective shadow is a dull, desaturated color to make the shadow pop more and the highlight stand out. That's kind of the trick of it. Otherwise, if they're all saturated, it really, really makes the picture clash and look really obnoxious to look at. You want to pick your colors wisely, otherwise it can really make it hard to see or take away from the value of like the line art or the colors that really you want to pop. If you want to pop them all, oh boy. But yeah, see it's very subtle. And again, we'll go, we'll go in with the skin tone, the base color, soon enough. Now we're adding the reflective light and the shadows to give shape and more depth to it. And again, I don't use the blender or the smudge brush because, well, I'll show you here in a minute the reason why I don't. It's very tricky and it can really go against you when you're trying to paint. With the way I'm painting, it's very clear that it's not soft lines all the time. There's like a hard line every now and again. Let me show you over here what happens when you're smudging. It's... oh, that's not it. There we go. Yeah, they get, they get really muddy. I'll show you. Check it out. 
quick. Let me go to a brush, a smaller brush. Look what happens. Yeah, it smooths it out, but see how you're trying to get a subtle color? You've got those lumpy little... It's very time consuming. When instead there's 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 easier ways to go about it, like the the airbrush. That's a really easy trick I usually use. Like I want to I'll want to lighten up. Oh, see, let me try this again. I want to make it subtly change together. I use a small airbrush. And see how it softens that line. It helps make it subtle. The so it's softer. But be careful, you don't want to color completely with airbrush, otherwise it really flattens it because it's all so soft, but then there's really hard ink lines that just really, it's really kind of hard on the eyes. Oh, sorry. It's, it is like, it's two different styles, you want to be careful. Okay, back to what I was doing, reflective shadow. Let's get smaller brush here so we can do the serratus interior lovingly referred to as riblets because they're so delicious <laughs> pardon me I can't help myself sometimes but see how nice it's looking it's or as far as like it's, it's got dimension to it it's popping a little bit bigger of a brush not not terribly bigger and go to the abs and we're gonna do a little bit more for this at the end I don't necessarily do highlights so much as far as to make the reflection of the skin tone against each other. It's a little bit of a trick I use and I, I think it's, I, I find it appealing and hopefully it'll be insightful in one way or another for, for you or anyone watching. Um, again, I'm kind of outlining it at first. Once I add the reflective lighting, not shadow, the reflective lighting, and the base color in that process, it'll be less outlined and more colored in. Down here in the lower abdomen, um, it, it's often, it's common to see um, sometimes people adding a line from the belly button down, like, like this, but be careful because it's not a separated muscle group like the abs are. It's one big muscle. So there's not necessarily a line down there. It's, and if you're not careful, it can make it look like the eighth, a, eighth pack. And those are terrifying. <laughs> they are a real thing though, but most commonly in people with steroids. So, I mean, people can legitimately get them. It's, it's totally real, but most, it's stigmatized to people with steroids. So I would suggest being very careful about that. And unfortunately, a lot of people don't know and they'll lump it together with that. Anyway, still doing the reflective shadow, painting it in, not softening it yet. We'll do that towards the end if it looks, if there's any hard lines we want to get rid of. Kind of making the elbow bone stand out a little bit there. It's kind of, kind of neat how you can do that with reflective shadows. You can make like veins or muscle groups there that other times you can, you can ink that, but when you're doing muscles, you kind of, it looks really appealing if you actually just paint it in instead of, oh, sorry, look at her, instead of drawing it in because when you use lines, it really flattens it out. So if he's got a bicep and you want to accentuate it, I would suggest trying to paint it out instead of actually inking it out because it'll look a lot more 3D and pop a lot stronger than a, a little line. And I'll, I'll show that a little more in the tutorial series I'm going to do when I go about the bicep as well as the back, which can also be a very tricky thing to do. Okay, we're almost done with the reflective shadows. Let's see. We'll... Yeah, it's kind of hard in certain areas, but we'll work through that. Okay. Now to go to the base color and start bringing the shapes back in, especially the riblets here. Again, this is not the highlight, this is the base color. We just colored kind of over with a shadow that kind of blends it together. 
Let's see. So we're getting the shapes back in. We do the highlights last, obviously, but you want to often change the size of your brush to do this. So that way it's more natural looking. Otherwise, if you're working with a very small brush in a big area, it can be really, really liney and flatten it out really bad. Okay, the abs now. And this kind of takes away the outline-y kind of color that was going on and adds depth to it. And while we're here, we're going to do a little trick that makes it look like a lighting. I'm going to change the brush size to a smaller one. And check this out. Again, this is not the highlight. This is the base color. It acts as a reflective light. I'm just putting this all over a little bit. And so instead of doing the highlight, can make it look reflective without lightening it up too much. And I kind of do this to the perimeter of the of the body where the light would show or where to give it more of a three-dimensional look. You don't necessarily want to outline the whole body, like both sides of his arms per se, but where the skin is going to show. Like right there, the reflection of his bi of his bicep to his forearm for the the, the crease of the arm is, that's a good place to put it, as well as, like I said, the bicep. But, it's a little cool, it's, it's, it's handy. And it's really pressure sensitivity that helps it. Now, if you have a hard line, like, see, the, right, right here, it's developed a bit of a hard line. That's where I'd go in with the airbrush. Make sure it's not too big. And take the color I'm trying to blend it with to, blend, to put it back. And look how it softens it right back up. That way you don't get too hard of a shape. Because yes, it's painted, but it's also got a softness to it. You can tame back the lines a little bit and make it more subtle. Okay, so... Going to the pecs now. You want a good sized brush, not huge, but big enough to where it's not going to be a small line. And then smaller brush, uh, small, and kind of trace the edge of it a little bit. And it's kind of like a diamond pattern where you're trying to accentuate because, uh, again, it's raised, so the muscle changes a little bit in shape. But adding that reflective lighting, which is the base color, really adds depth to it that it wasn't there before. I'm going to go ahead and add more depth, more, uh, shape to the neck here because the a man's neck is really quite detailed while a woman's is very simple it really is a masculine feature to accentuate the neck which is a good trick if you want to make it look more masculine without giving him like a thousand muscles <laughs> it can look scary otherwise now let's fix the chin a little the lips up here And the chin a little bit. I usually do more square chins, but Zeppelin isn't full Barra, thank God for him, because that can be scary sometimes, especially if it's, well, it can be just scary. <laughs> okay, so that's we've gone that far. Now to do the kind of highlight, or the last color I do, and not the high, the, the, latter, the later color that lightens it up, I use a big brush for this one because it's kind of like a blocking in the color to make it the base color blend with the shadows a little bit. Check that out. And again, I'm using the painted brush, not the airbrush, the painted brush. It helps smooth it and blend it in. Adding that fourth color really adds dimension. And it lightens it up too. And I, it's very close to the skin base layer color. Very close. But it's just light enough to where it makes that difference. But again, you want to have a pretty big brush to do this because you want it to be have really soft edges. And 
I'm right now doing the abs and the abdomen right there. And it just lightens it up and makes it look nice. Now the down there, now the riblets. This is where you move to a smaller brush. And you just do it very lightly. And not the whole area, but just like the center. But it just adds that depth and it's soft where it blends together. And out of the neck too. And last in the face, which you want a pretty big brush to get like the, oop, too big, the cheeks to make that smooth. And the bridge of the nose. Kind of smooths back the shadows a little bit because they were a little hard. A little bit smoke, too big. Smaller for the nose and smaller for the chin, otherwise, you'll lose the under the lip shadow very easily, which is very subtle anyway. Then, even way smaller for the lip and even smaller for above the lip. You want to make sure to get that. I did lose a lot of shadows in the process, so I'm going to quickly re-add those, but with a much smaller brush. Even the nose lost a little bit. I am working a lot smaller than I usually do, but this is the canvas size and the same file that I'm working on the app tutorial, and that has a lot of layers. Uh, it's going to be very in-depth. I hope I didn't lose myself too much, and I hope people will like it. But, um, yeah, so it kind of got smaller for the Ford Zeppelin here, but I think it did a decent job. And at the end, if you really wanted to, wrong, wrong, wrong palette, highlights. I usually place it between the ink, but above the color layer, and it's like a rim light, so to speak. And it's a yellow, soft, a very... I'll show you again. It's a very soft yellow. Not high, like not like a super bright yellow, but soft, like a pastel. And I use it to highlight the where the light hits it, like the lips, the exterior of the body where the reflective light was to kind of accentuate it. The darker the colors, the more it stands out. I'm going to highlight his clothes too on the exterior, because that's where the, high, the uh, reflective light was. And it's just a nice touch that so gives it more of that 3D. And I like to avoid using white at all costs when doing highlights, because white can flatten it very quickly. It's the same kind of principle that you might notice when I do Caden, he, that he has when he has black hair. I do not use white highlights because black and white like that can be very flat. My sister Elvin and I, when we went to we had art classes, that was one of the first things art teachers taught us was just avoid black and avoid white because it's just it's too flat. The blacks I use, unless I'm inking, are actually off black. They're a little red or a little blue or purple. They're never actually straight black because you just it just flattens it. It really does. So be careful when you pick your colors. Okay. Almost done. I think I am going to outline it a little bit because I do like it when you to outline the muscles. Not every single end of the line, but in spots where they really pop. And again, pressure sensitivity is making this work as well as it is. The light most spots, I will highlight those too but not terribly so. Just enough to make it look like the light is hitting him on the spots that stand out the most. Okay. And that's that's it. He's all done. And Cleo Bill has her little fantasy after all. No, no nippers, Ellie. I'm sorry. Maybe next time.